You're listening to the Ecosystem Approach Show. I'm Jason. And I'm Patricia. Tune in every Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific Time and 4 p.m. Eastern Time on Transformation Talk Radio. We discovered that human potential is severely limited when you program humans like a machine, which is standard practice today for self-improvement. The ecosystem approach teaches you how to uncover your infinite potential by using natural methods that are truly revolutionary. Join us now for the ecosystem approach show. Today, we're going to talk about being level headed. It seems like it is a trait that is put on a pedestal that is to be respected and admired. However, There is a downside, and often level-headed people struggle to enjoy life, are burdened with the excess responsibility, and are disconnected from many of their true talents, abilities, and the parts of their life that are interesting, passionate, and alive. Whether you are level-headed or not, you must see this show. Stay tuned and find out more. We are married intuitives with over 25 years experience who created the ecosystem approach. This is a groundbreaking way to see yourself in in this age of Aquarius. We help you unleash healing and potential that is unknown today and that is totally unique to you personally. This is not your typical type of energy work. We help you with life-changing internal discovery that is powerful, rational, practical, and useful for everyday life. Jason, I know you have a story about the downside of being level-headed. You know, it's kind of embarrassing, and it's okay. it's very personal to us, but we, we were working really hard, and we were living together at the time, and um, 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 Trisha would say to me, um, and it was usually kind of, kind of sideways, but Snar- I, snarky, snarky. Yes. Yeah, okay. Snarky probably would. Are we ever going to get married? And it didn't register like it should, but I would say, well, when we have more time, because we, we were, we were in a position where we had a, a lot of success. We had people coming out of the woodwork, um, wanting to have sessions with us. Mm-hmm. We were busy all the time, Correct. sometimes just, um, um, exhaustingly busy. Mm-hmm. And, um, um, you know, I, I didn't want to, interrupt that flow to, to, to do something like getting married. Well, because you knew how much time it took. Well, it, it, it wasn't about that as much as it was, um, to me. Okay. This is, Mr. Mr. Level-headed. This, <laughs> this is so male. Um, but for me, it was, it was, well, you know, of course we're going to get married. Let's just, let's just make it easy when it kind of happens in a natural opening. Okay. Um, and, uh, uh, we went to, uh, Monterey, yes, which, we which it, it, we're on the West coast in California. Um, if you've ever heard of Monterey, it's a, it's a beautiful place. Uh, totally. Didn't they have, uh, wasn't there a couple of movies that they, they shot there? It's, it's, it's right on the water. Um, um, it literally is very, very picturesque. We, we went, there was about an hour away from where we lived, an hour and a half, something like that mm-hmm. and, uh, stayed in a hotel and, and we were on the beach, um, and it was just sunset. And um, um, we, I, we had gone to the wharf that day. Yes. And and um, 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 it was, it, well, first off, the weather was perfect. The weather and, was perfect. Uh, it was. It was absolutely perfect. And um, then Jason said, let's go take, let's take a ride. And I'm like, oh, okay, you know, I, <laughs> I, I was oblivious by the way to what was about to happen well we had the chariot then was, we did we had yes the, it was yes. we have i have a volkswagen convertible it's a classic it's a way. classic yes, yes. And, by all means and so we were driving driving along the coast there and yeah. we pulled over and yes and we were, we were walking on the beach and it was it was very nice and and i had already gotten a a little um, um a soda can and a blinking heart light <laughs> this, this stuff that you could get at the uh you know, ninety nine cents. Well, at the wharf, they have all this. Uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's a tourist trap. Yeah, you know? it really is. So, so <laughs> uh, you know, I got that, and I I made a uh, jelly bean jelly bean ring. Right, you took a paper clip and, <laughs> and bought some jelly beans and put a jelly bean on top of it. It was really cute, actually. Everyone, you know, and then I I we were sitting there on the on the on the ocean there and on the water, and I got down on one knee and 
and propose. And of course, she started to cry because one of us is more emotional than the other. And these people over, um, it was they were about 50 feet away. Yes. They were watching. <laughs> and she started to cry and they yelled, so... So what's the answer? <laughs> <laughs> and so I finally said, yes, let me just say it that way. <laughs> I guess the whole point, I need to bring it back to the point, there is that um, I was being level-headed. Yes, you were. And and I never realized how that connection, that that demonstration of a connection that we have together that's public, you know, she very much. to say she's we're engaged or she's my wife was very, very, very important to her because of her emotional story. Correct. And, um, and and let me just back it up and say, for the most part, I never believed I belonged anywhere. Yes. So, so that so, was the whole, that was behind the whole thing, but that was emotional. That was emotional, yes. but still, it was important. Yes, it was. And um, and so that's um, um, that's the part that just just escaped me until it didn't <laughs> and um uh, but it, it was it was a really nice weekend and and we we went back home and started working again and and by the way it was very practical of us we are kind of practical together definitely you know i knew i i knew i knew better than to just surprise her with a ring because she's very fussy about her jewelry I am. And I admit. and so so for me to just go out there and 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 buy pick a ring. Else. Yeah, yes. pick something else. Yes. Um so we did it together and um which was fun. Yeah. We actually had yeah. a really good time doing it. Yes. yes. So, but let's let's talk about let's talk about the other side of of the being level headed. Yes, level headed is is sensible and well the definition is sensible rational possessing sound judgment okay and the downside of being level-headed is a form of dullness and boring and by the way and, you're not and, any of that and even stupid you know <laughs> but um the objective rational can be uninteresting and uninspiring that's true that's and true. So i was here going along and saying okay what's the most practical thing to do and by the way that was part of my emotional story my dad was was not um not emotional at all not emotional he, he was not sentimental you know right. um none of that it was just you know yeah. um interesting actually you know kind of kind of actually it was very dull and yeah. it was very cold and i grew up in an environment where you know you didn't do you didn't do emotional excess or you didn't right. didn't um um do anything for someone's birthday that sort of thing it was just um that just the way it was yes but Here's the thing, okay? The best ideas always come from an energy that lacks sensibility and good judgment. The most creative ideas in the world, that's true, you know, um, are not sensible. They're not they're not sound. No. Um, and um, you know, one of the things that we did when we were um um when we were working, we we both worked at an art school, and that's where we met, and we would go. This is very very sensible, but it's also kind of romantic. Very much. There was this. Uh, it was Metron. It was a, it was a movie complex. Yes. And um, uh, I don't know who brought it. You uh, you I, would I like did. the bed. Yeah, I did. Uh, she take a, an avocado and a little a little some cheese. You know, uh -huh. some of the packaged cheese you have, and then a box of crackers or some crackers. Exactly. And we she'd put them in her purse. We'd go into the Metron, sit someplace. Yes. And the Metron. Or sometimes we would sit outside too. Yeah. Yes. Um, and which is usually way. outside of the Metron, but yeah, that's you know, true. But they had all this um, what kind of food? Uh, a movie food that was not healthy. Yeah. yeah. Very very expensive, you know. And so we we had those little picnics all the times, and it really. It was very, uh, it really up, connected it, us. Yes. It really did. It was very romantic in so many ways. And yet it was also very practical. We still do that all the time. We, we'll pull yes, over we the do. side of the road with mom or with the dogs and have, uh, just have like a little, a little picnic. snack. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. So, um, um, but some of the things that we've done with the ecosystem approach, like channeling the planets and using that information yeah. to download, using planetary information. I've had so many people come to me about using planetary energy. Um, 
energies have been so effective for them for them in their yes. life yes and yes. that was that came from cruelty creativity and inspiration correct it was not sensible because yeah. no one i haven't heard anybody else doing that no. you know channeling the planets understanding their personality right and then using that energy of that personality to to um download it for your own life to, exactly. to help you so it's actually pretty good so jason what is the uh, summary of this segment being too level-headed caused hurt and some pain in my relationship with uh, my sweetheart, Patricia, here. Even though I was being practical, my level-headedness kept me from seeing the emotional importance to Patricia of being engaged and married. Um, it's We've always had a type of practicality between us that it could include an emotional aspect, but being level-headed is associated with being sensible, rational, and having good judgment. The downside to level-headedness is dull and boring. Right. It makes people uninteresting, uninspiring, creative ideas, and the ability to um, um, see possibilities is rarely practical or sensible. The big ideas and the possibilities in relationships and for the betterment of mankind does not come from level-headed people. Right. But not to say, I, I first off, I'm so grateful that I live with someone that's level-headed <laughs> because when I get emotional... He helps me put my feet on the ground or we will clear. I will clear to get my feet on the ground. I came from a family that was total emotion and, and it didn't matter what time, day or night, there was emotion going on in the house in which I was raised. And so it didn't make sense to Jason, but as he started to get to know my story and I started to understand my story more, what started to happen was there became a logic in the understanding of why reactions or actions were what they were in any given moment regarding me and him. I just yeah. want to say that. So, Jason, in the next segment, we're going to explore the part of this topic that is the most difficult and problematic, which is often missed. This is the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason and Patricia, and you're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This is the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason, and I'm Patricia. And in this segment, we're going to explore the part of this topic that is most difficult and problematic, which is often missed. Jason, what is the part of this topic that is the most problematic? Most people are stuck in approaching life in one way or another. Okay. In other words, being level-headed, sensible, practical, or completely emotional and without sufficient practicality. Okay. Now, this is not about labeling people. Okay. It's not about a judgment about people. This is a kind of an observation that we've we made is yeah. that, you know, people... Um, tend to be one or the other and here's the reason for that and this is what we're out this is the point it's kind of the point to the whole show okay you know um I, we did something about um um it was a, a couple couple weeks ago about um um magical thinking and how yes. the benefit of that yes you know and it, this is sort of on the same vein you know we're saying level-headed okay. you know blah 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 you know you don't want your um, your accountant to, to, to be, be emotional, emotional. <laughs> to say, oh, that deduction. Yeah, you deserve that deduction, even though the IRS will never explain it, never accept it, you know, yes, yes. you know, uh, you want, you want, you want the person who's designing the, the bridge that you're driving over to be very level headed. Yes. And to understand that this is, this is what, it, what you have to do and what you don't. But when it comes to uh, something like a dressmaker or drawing a piece of art or um, uh, something to that effect, a little bit of emotion exactly. is but, not such a bad idea. But, but here's the thing, okay. and this is part of the ecosystem approach. Okay. We're not trying to program you to be a certain way or not a yeah. certain way. Oh, yeah, well what, said. What we're trying to do is help you be authentic to who you are. Yeah. And, and for some people, depending on your astrology, your natal chart, um, you tend to be more practical and some people tend to be um, less practical and more emotional. Correct. That's okay. That's the way it should be. But here's the problem. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem that most people don't miss because um, that they miss because it's um, it's been normalized. 
Which is? Compulsive behavior. Oh. There's a personality typing system called the Enneagram. We've talked about this many times yes. on the show. Yes. Um, that describes personality traits based on behavioral or emotional compulsions. Correct. And that um, 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 these compulsions... Um, we 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 express these compulsions without choice. In fact, a lot of us don't have any choice but to do them a certain way. For example, okay, okay. Um, um, you know when when we we worked with couples, you know we've been doing this for twenty five years. We worked with couples, right. and typically when there's a problem with with um, couples, one has these set of emotional compulsions. That's and the other person has these sets of emotional compulsions. And they don't blend well. They don't blend well. And yeah. they're saying, well, okay, if only the other person was more like me. And that's not the solution to emotional problems. No. If you using the ecosystem approach, compulsions, we see that compulsions come from negative energy attached to your essence. Correct. So as you start to use the ecosystem approach to remove those negative energies, yes. all of a sudden you have what's a, a form of consciousness and choice, right? even free will, because compulsions, emotional compulsions, strip you away from free will. Yes. Um, so, In other words, if you have to do something only a certain way, you don't have free will in it. Yes. I just want to make sure that people understand that. Go ahead. Well, and I'm sure there's people out there that are thinking, well, huh, I, I can control how I feel. I can control my emotions. And chances are, if, you, if you're saying that to yourself right now or trying to say it to us, mm -hmm. I see that there's a compulsion to be more level-headed. That um, Because those are usually the rules they were raised in. Yes. And, and the truth is, is that, that there are times that you shouldn't be level-headed. You should you should connect with the people that are close to you in ways that are um, um, it's like a dance. It's the energies we see this as being intuitives. We see life force and and the natural world yes. is full of these subtle energies. Is driven by this these subtle energies and what makes going to a national park an amazing experience is the energy that's connected with that that ecosystem yeah yes and when your ecosystem is full of compulsions negative energies correct um um you can't have that vibrant you can't have that va va boom you right. can't have that here i am world um see who i am um what happens is it it gets it gets um squelched and correct. um um uh, put down so the enneagram is a personality typing system that describes these emotional compulsions correct so there's they have nine different personality types yes one not being better than one not the be, other. yes exactly so you know nine's not better than the one and That's that sort correct. of thing so um but um they all each one of these types have a set of emotional compulsions for example okay eights have to be aggressive twos have to be nice Yes. Um, fours have to be emotional. Sixes have to respond with fear. Um, there's, it could be a little more complicated than that, but for the most part, these people are locked into those kind of reactions. That is correct. Um, they don't have a range of behaviors that they can choose in the moment. And what we do with the ecosystem approach is as you start to remove those negative energies. And you all of a sudden, excuse me, being the where are we? The four, four in the group. Um, uh, it, it it was almost as if my mouth dropped open when I started removing negative energy. And then I realized in, in a situation that might have been similar to something in my past that I actually had a choice of how to react or think or even be in a situation. It was so surprising to me. It was like, oh, Really? And these things happen um, energetically. They don't yes, happen yes. by reading a book and saying, I'm going to decide to act this way instead. I'm going to decide to be more level-headed or less level-headed. Yes, yes. You know, yes. Um, it's it's an energy process. Correct. And um, hmm. um, compulsive behaviors are a covert way of taking away free will. Yes. And it's um, they confine us. Yes, they do. And 
you, we can see that there's a form of enslavement on earth that comes from compulsive behaviors. Yeah. So, um, um, Emotions, feelings, and intangible ideas like possibilities and visions are energies and do not follow the rules of sensitive sensibility and practicality. Correct. There's always, and I hate this word, I don't know why it is, but there's always a whimsy or an arbitrariness or a capriciousness to these energies. Correct. Life force doesn't say it has to be this way. No. Life force says, hey, let's take the natural world and infuse it with this, this energy of possibility. You know, um, well, and and I just like the audience to to stop and think for a moment. Possibility, possibility. How many possibilities for what I want out there in life are there? Yes. And when you start removing negative energies, you would not believe the amount of um, possibilities, the choices um, that you actually have. Patricia, it's, it's awesome. Patricia's a gardener. But if you were to take five seeds of the same plant, that's correct. Plant them right next to each other, so they all get the same amount of sun, nutrients, water, water. That's correct. They would all grow up just slightly different. Yes, they would. They'd all say, "I'm going to be creative." Yes, and 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 birth forth forth with with life. Yes, in a way that is unique to me. Yes, meaning the plant. Yes, yes, and that's life. That's yes. how life works. Now. Um, I always read the magazines when we go through the checkout. When, when we go shopping in the in the uh, grocery store, I'm just the Indian. I just push the cart, look pretty, and, and pay, pay the, the bill. bill. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> you know she's out there, but you know talking to people and doing things. I'm just you know. Yeah. But so when, when we're going through the checkout line and I'm reading the the magazines, the, I came across this uh, uh, the this uh, Time Life Science of Marriage, uh -huh. and it's kind of an oxymoron: science and marriage. When what they did is they did a study about um, um, happy married couples, and okay. they observed them and said, "Well, these are the traits. So if you you imitate these traits, then you'll be happy." No, <laughs> it's so stupid. I mean, I mean, this is where science goes off. This is where science um, um, it's a it's a perception mm -hmm. that if you study something and you can classify it and and compartmentalize it and put it into a structure, okay. then you can understand it. And it's not true because marriage is a dance of energies, That's of, of a connection, of vibrancy, of uh, relationships. Good yes. relationships are vibrant and dynamic, and they move and they and they go from one one way to another and they're you know? adaptable they're adaptable in 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 any given moment and they're full of creativity correct if you just imitate what they said in that that book about marriage and said i'm going to have a happy marriage you know chances are using that process okay makes you dull in the first place <laughs> you know you're never going to be very interesting to your partner right and um um it's never going to work a great example of that was my daughter broke up with a boyfriend one time and he took a level-headed approach to try and get her back. It didn't work. He used flowers and I love yous and and all those things because it like he read it in a book. Because he thought that that was the emotional part. That was those are the rules. Those yes. are the rules. He was about, following the rules. And, that's right. And but he completely missed why she broke up with him, yes. and of course it didn't work. So yes, good. That well, there you yeah. go. Yeah. All right, Jason. What is the summary of this segment? People act in a way that is compulsive. Yes. So if you're level-headed, you're that way most of the time, and it's rare that you can choose another way. Mm -hmm. The Enneagram is a personality typing system that describes the personality of people with a particular set of emotional compulsions. Most of the problems we see with relationships are because one or both people in a relationship cannot step outside of their compulsive behaviors. Correct. If you take this idea to the extreme, it's the reason why countries and governments get stuck in conflict. Mm -hmm. The personality um, of science, by definition, is level-headed. Um, in pure form, science will always consider all the possibilities, but because it's implemented by human beings with behavioral compulsions, the day-to-day -day implementation of science is very level-headed. And then when science studies intangibles and emotions, it struggles to maintain the whimsy and the arbitrariness um, mm -hmm. that gives these energies life. Okay. The power um, is almost filtered out. 
We all need to embrace the uncertainty and the unpredictability of these energies, which um, are at the most powerful, which are the most powerful in the world. In the next segment, we're going to talk about how to be, quote, just enough level headed, unquote, in the way that works for your life. This is the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason and Patricia, and you're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This is the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason, and I'm Patricia. And in this segment, we're going to talk about how to be, quote, just enough, unquote, in, uh, excuse me, just enough level-headed in a way that works for your life. I like that one. All right, Jason, what do you mean by, quote, just enough level-headed? Most people struggle to have a range of behaviors that can move and adapt to specific situations. Okay. Um, it has to do with the compulsive nature of behaviors. Mm -hmm. There are times when you have, you take a seven or an eight and you, and you ask them to be soft, to be gentle, Ooh, yeah, not always to, to be empathetic with yes. their partner. Yes. They can't do it. Yeah. And sometimes, um, 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 the other is, is the reverse is true. When you ask someone like a two, or a three or four to be um to, to set boundaries strong, strong and stern yeah would be the way yeah I would to, say to, 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 say to, to get tough yes you know they can't do it well you know what i, I don't know why but this story popped in and it's, it's a fast one but um my father was an eight an eight to the max and i'm talking about in so many different ways he was uh and all definitely a personality but i had gotten hit in the hit in the head with a rock and i walked through the door. Well, basically my brother carried me through the door and there's blood just running down my face. And my father was painting the living room and he turned around and with the one eye I could see out of at the moment, his mouth dropped open and he went over and he grabbed a hold of me and he put me in his arms and he slid down the wall and cried with me. That was not my father. That was not of my, what I knew my father's nature to be. He was kind of a bully. He would be very blunt. much so. Oh, he yeah. would he would be um, yes. um, critical. Oh, and um, and always say the wrong thing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Yes. But the point that I'm getting at is is that the emotion of seeing one of his children hurt to that extent, and of course, I know it was the blood that did it more than anything. <laughs> um, but it it it. It just it it hit my father right where he where his heart was the most open. And the problem is, is that he couldn't maintain that kind of emotion. Not at all. Because he had these emotional compulsions that were related to being an eight. Yes. And that's what we're trying to say. OK. Yes. That um, understand your personality. That's the first thing. Well, that's the first thing. But in, in the world today, after 25 years of experience working with all these people. Yeah. We see that most people can't don't have the ability to force themselves to step away from their compulsive behaviors. That is correct. And that's why it's an energetic process. It's not a, it's not a, I'm going to decide to do this. I'm going to stop being this way. I'm, I'm well, how about, how about people going, I'm going on a diet today. I'm doing it yeah, and I'm going to, yeah. you know, and within three days, they're, they're more than done and eating more than they did before. The point that we're getting at is, is that, when you use the ecosystem approach and start removing negative energies, when you don't have to go through those negative energies to be who you authentically are, it makes it so much easier. That's why the ecosystem approach works. You know, um, taking care of my mom with dementia, mm. her consciousness fades and what all she's ha left. All left with is compulsive behaviors. Yes. And those are the. And if you if you've heard us, we're saying that compulsive behaviors come from negative energy attached to you. Yes, that's really sad. Yes. that when there's only a piece left, mm -hmm. the piece that's left is the bad part. And it's so sad because, and I just have to say, his mother is this. She's a two, and she's warm, loving, and caring. And um, when she's on, I would even call her dynamic. That's that's her energy is 
is wonderful. But when her energy is not on, meaning when the compulsions are taking over and the dementia is, is roaring, she's not even there. Well, and here's here's the thing. We're taught today that we can choose our behaviors. Yeah. That we use willpower and self control, <laughs> and um, but these things are not sustainable. That's They're not said, natural. Dieting. Yes. To human beings, when you're the ecosystem approach helps you be authentic to who you are. Yes. When you're authentic to who you are, it's sustainable because you have choices, and you also you not only have choices, but you have logic and emotion. And you can see both of them, maybe three or four different ways, and you get to choose. Well, and the reason you have those choices, Wonderful. the reason you have those choices is because you remove the negative energy. Mm -hmm. So the, your behaviors aren't compulsive. They come from who you are authentically. Yes. Yes, and, yes. and who you are authentically can be seen in your natal chart in astrology. Mm -hmm. But um, um, they're, they're not the compulsions of your Enneagram type. Correct. Now, we see a lot of people... We, you know, we use both tools with the ecosystem approach. We use the Enneagram. That's right. Because that helps people understand what they need to clear. Yes. And then the natal chart. And if they don't match up, and and frankly, we're just, after 25 years of doing this, we're seeing this in ourselves. Yeah. Our Enneagram type does not match up with our with our astrology. At all. And and our well, astrology is a is a symbol. It's a representation. It's a basic, yes. just a bare bones representation of mm -hmm. who we are authentically. Exactly. And it's and it's so interesting when you strip away those compulsions. Yes. Oh my gosh, you know, um, people who've known me for many many years know I'm a completely different person that I today than I was before. That's correct. And in a way that is natural to me. Yes. Is it authentic to me? Yes. Um, you know, you can't just decide to change your attitude to remove behavioral compulsions. You know, wouldn't this that is, be great if you could? But you know, no. um, we come into this world with a lot of negative energy attached to us already, mm -hmm. and um, these toxic negative energies are the basis for our behavioral compulsions. Correct. And um, um, you can change your behavior for a short time, but it's not sustainable. And you can use willpower, and that might work for a short period of time. But as a person is stressed or backed into a corner, those old compulsions come forward. Exactly. So, exactly. So we seek that with the ecosystem approach to help people remove their behavioral compulsions by clearing negative energies of their Enneagram type. Correct. When this starts to happen, it's amazing. Yes. The free will starts to develop and these anxieties and struggles and traumas that you've had kind of melt away and the authentic person comes forward, you know, I like the true Libra of my wife much more than the than the Enneagram Four type of my wife. Correct. And there are some similarities, sure why, but yes, um, there are some similarities. But it's it's an amazing, it's an amazing transformation. What we see today, people don't change this way. No, they cope with their life. They cope with their negative they energy. Act as if yes, or they um, they they work around it. Yes. You know, they have these compulsions and they, they say, well, that's not very good, but I'm just going to work around it. Correct. That's not change. And that's why, you know, over the last couple hundred years, we're not we're not growing. We're not evolving as a world. No, I'm so. sorry to say, truly sorry to say. Um, so, Jason, what is the summary of this um, segment? The majority of people struggle to have a range of behaviors because they always settle back into their familiar compulsions. Yes. These compulsions are represented by a person's Enneagram type. The ecosystem approach is designed to help people overcome their compulsive behaviors mm -hmm. and the confines of their um, Enneagram type, because it's it's like a box. It's like a, tr a cage. Correct. Oh, good one. As this happens, the authentic person emerges in a way that is soul satisfying. Most of the issues that human beings have is a result of toxic negative energy attached at the level of their essence or soul. Willpower, self-control cannot overcome behavioral compulsions. They are energies that must be removed using energy techniques. Human beings are, in reality, ecosystems, and the negative energies attached to them are toxic energies and suppress that ecosystem. Mm -hmm. The ecosystem approach is designed to restore a person's ecosystem in a natural way yes. so humans can evolve as was intended. 
as the way they were designed. Yes. This natural ecosystem will allow true free will. Yes, definitely. So, um, Jason, um, let's explain to people how we do the clearing. The meaning emotional clearing, yes. Yes, a meaning removing negative energy. So you have this negative energy attached to you to remove these compulsive, uh, so that are, that create these compulsions, these are yes. behavioral compulsions. Yes. So what you do is, we're going to do this in the next segment. When we say to eliminate, mm -hmm. in your mind's eye, in your imagination, gather up um, veils and illusions, barriers, or specific emotions, and then blow them into the processor. Um, uh, Moxie's putting the, a picture of the processor up now. Okay. Put it goes in the top, it gets processed, it comes out neutral, mm -hmm. um, and, and we just keep going. And um, I just want to remind everyone, removing negative energy from yourself um, is also helping the guy next to you or um, the house you live in, or even the people that you work with. It's the ecology of the eco, the whole That's ecosystem. That's exactly yes. right. And um, it's so very, very, very important. And the important part is, is that you take that negative energy and put it into that processor. If you can't see that processor, that's okay. Um, uh, see, uh, see yourself putting uh, negative energy into a garbage can because that's basically where it belongs. But the uh, processor really does help remove it. And we will empty the garbage cans. We will also yeah. uh, make sure that the processor is working correctly. And then one of the things we're going to do is we're going to activate life force. Life force is the most powerful energy that any of us has access to. And it, life force will not only make you feel better, but it also will help you heal from the toxic energies that you just removed. So with all of that said, stay tuned. When we come back, we're going to help you understand the downside of being level-headed and start to remove your compulsive behavior so you can have true free will. This is the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason, and I'm Patricia. Listen, uh, you're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. This is the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason, and I'm Patricia. And in this segment, we're going to help you understand the downside of being level-headed and start to remove your compulsive behaviors so you can have true free will. I mean... What an amazing statement. Yes. And and I love that. We're gonna get you started with these clearings. But if you if you um say this is what this is how I wanna live. Yes. I wanna I wanna um um use the ecosystem approach. I wanna live in a more natural way. I wanna live in a way that's authentic to me. Mm -hmm. You know, um um go to our website right now, the ecosystemapproach.org, sign up for our free section. Um, um, you'll be glad you did, and you'll get these clearings written out for you mm -hmm. um, every week. So, and and by the way, uh, going through the clearings once a day, once every couple of days, there is huge benefit to it. Give it a try, everyone. It 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 really really works. We're usually in a good mood, and that's because if we're not, we clear it. Exactly. You know, it's exactly. it's negative energy. We know it's yes. negative energy. Exactly. We just identify it and clear it and and move on. And move on. Exactly. So. All right. So um let's get started. Um here we go. I direct all my resources in all dimensions to eliminate the veils and illusions so I can see that level headed people can be dull, <laughs> boring, intellectually stubborn. I'm sorry. I hope yes. that's not you. Okay. Yes. Nice and easy. Take a breath. And started the tips and take a breath, but started the tips of your toes to remove um, veils and illusions that are keeping you stuck, being dull, boring, and intellectually stubborn. Take a breath. Throw that negative energy into the processor to your left. It just works, moves easier that way. All right. And I'm going to shorten it up just a little bit and to eliminate the veils and illusions so I can see that the best way for me to be authentic to myself is not trying to be true to a label like level-headed or emotional. Huh, what a concept. Nice and easy. Get rid of those veils and illusions. Throw them away. You don't need them. And to eliminate the stress, anxiety, and overwhelm in my life that could be the result of being practical or sensible in a way that is not authentic to me. Take a breath.
and to eliminate the veils and illusions. So I can see that just labeling yourself as level-headed or emotional can be a trap and a restriction that is unnecessary. Take a breath. You don't need to be labeled anything but who you are, but you have to do it by removing negative energies like these veils and illusions. Take a breath. Throw them away. And to eliminate the veils and illusions so I can see that everyone behaves in a compulsive way. Mm -hmm. And often they are trapped in those compulsive behaviors so that the idea of um, that behavior is a choice is really not true. Take a breath. Get rid of it. Because the truth is we were given choice before we even came into these bodies. It's one of the amazing things about being here on earth. Use that ability to choose, but how you do it in today's world is by removing negative energy first. Take a breath, everybody. And to eliminate the veils and illusions so I can see that the way to overcome compulsive behaviors is by using the ecosystem approach, which removes the negative energies that create compulsive behaviors. Take a breath and blow it out. And by the way, you know what? I, I want to make this comment. We're helping you guys with these clearings, but we're also doing them for ourselves at the same time. Yes. We believe in what we do. And we we walk the talk and we do it every we, single day. We it, certainly it, do. It makes a huge difference in yes. our life. And it's it it's cumulative. It really So the is. more you do it, it, yes. it kind of, you you build up a, a form of inertia going forward that's yes. really, really positive. Exactly. Okay, Jason, go ahead. Sorry. Um, Seven. Oh, okay. The veil is an illusion so I can see that, that a scientific approach is by nature level-headed and practical and may not be the best way to understand intangibles like relationships, happiness, or emotions that often are whimsical and not easily reduced to a formula or a process. Nice and easy. Get rid of those veils and illusions. And to eliminate the barrier so I can see that my Enneagram type represents my personality based on compulsive behaviors that need to be cleared and the ecosystem approach helps me to overcome that type or my type of Enneagram. Take a breath and blow it out. And to eliminate the barrier so I can see that using myself, um, seeing myself as an ecosystem where toxic negative energies need to be removed is the best way to live. Yeah. Take a blow breath. Out. Take a breath. That's I'm why when, you, when there's an oil spill, you remove the oil, the ecosystem comes back. Yes. And it doesn't need to be motivated. It, it doesn't need to be exactly. It doesn't need to be forced. It doesn't right. need to be convinced. Well, and and just think about all the little ducks that uh, get stuck in the oil spill. Think about that's your toxic energy. It's up to you to get rid of it. Yes. All right. So, um, and to eliminate the veils and illusions, so I can see that being level-headed can be good in some circumstances, and bad in others. But when it's compulsive. It's always bad. It doesn't serve. Nice and easy. Get rid of that. These are compulsive behaviors. Throw it away. Jason, I'm ready to activate some life force. Let's, let's do that. Here we go. Follow along, everyone. I direct all my resources in all dimensions to activate life force energy, the most powerful energy in the world, so I can be happy and healthy and have the ability to see because I've removed negative energy to see what my choices are so I can be the best that I can be starting right now today. Nice and easy. Pull in that life force energy. Let it go all the way in through the top of your head to the tips of your toes. Stop it right there. Ask it to turn around. Ask it to come back up your body. And to activate life force so I can have hope to be vibrant and have an alive ecosystem and live my life without internal restrictions or compulsions. Pull it in. And throw away negative energy. And activate life force so I can trust that if I'm authentic to myself, 
I'm going to be okay. Nice and easy. Pull it in. Blow out negative energy. And to activate life force so I can decide to focus on removing my emotional compulsions using the ecosystem approach so I can feel the amazing connection to my authentic self. And that feel is is amazing. It is. I've, it's the first time in my life that I've ever felt that. And it's it's amazing. Yeah. So for I want that for you. Energy. Yes. 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 And that's one of the things Jason and I came here to do is help deliver this message to you so you can be who you authentically are and who you came here to be. And last one, and activate life force so I can be happy and healthy and creative, have objectivity and creativity, um, have laughter and love and fun and joy, great health. And when I see something that isn't right for myself, I have the ability to see what it is and remove it because I have the choice to do so. Pull in and then blow out any negative energy left over. Jason, what are we going to talk about next week? So next week, we're going to kind of go back to basics. Okay. We're going to talk about what, what is the ecosystem approach okay. and why it's the best way to live. Oh, okay. now if you've been, if you're, if you're kind of an old hat at this, you've been listening to us for a while You say, well, I, I, I know the basics already, blah, blah, blah. You can, I, I write these things. I outline these things in a way that, um, um, on one hand you can get the basics, yes, but you can also get something else that you, a perspective, um, the big picture in a yes. way that you've never um, seen before. Mm -hmm. So be sure and tune in. I think you'll find this. This will put together a lot of the questions and the and the pieces that that don't seem to fit. Well, and because of negative energy, we often assume that we know uh, we know everything about everything, or we assume we know about this subject or another. And the bottom line is, is there is. Nothing wrong. In fact, I think it's very fun to go back and remind myself of the basics so that it helps me get a better picture starting with myself, but especially if I'm working with someone else. Well, you know, it's funny because we always say this is this is not a quick fix. It is not. But the the truth is is that as you as you start doing this yes. and you develop some momentum yes. and you start doing some more and more and more and you keep clearing and keep clearing you develop a um a power behind you yes that becomes more and more unstoppable Correct. and 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 beneficial to the world yes so so if, if this if all this stuff is sounding good to you? Yes. If you're getting chills. One, one piece of it. One piece of it or all of it. You're getting chills maybe. Maybe you're getting this this, this buzzing, this um, this excitement that's building um, in your gut. Um, this is, we've, we've, we've worked this out, so this is what you do. First of all, listen to our show every week. Right. Then go to our website, theecosystemapproach.org. Sign up for a free section. You'll get the weekly newsletter. You'll get the clearings. A picture of the processor is right there in the newsletter. Right. And you'll know what we're going to do. talk about the following week. It's um, um, it's really, we've made it really simple for you. Mm -hmm. It's um, it's all free. And so... Um, um, join us. Join us. Come come join us. Have and that authentic know, part for yourself. And... and Get a clearing buddy with your for yourself. It's an amazing thing to do. Our Facebook page is theecosystemapproach.org. Go go there. Our, our videos are there and like us if you would. Exactly. We'll connect next week, Monday at 1 p.m. Pacific and 4 p.m. Eastern time. This is Transformation Talk Radio, and you're listening to the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason and Patricia. Remember, your ecosystem is the most important one in the world. Thank you for listening to the Ecosystem Approach Show with Jason and Patricia. I'm Patricia. Tune in every week as we discuss practical ways to apply the Ecosystem Approach and develop your potential to live your life on your terms. For more information, visit our website at theecosystemapproach.org.